Hiya, what's up? I thought this week on the vlog we'd look back uh, on an event, one of the most eye-opening, haunting experiences I've ever been on. Um, and it was one that I documented fully as a video and as stills as well. So I thought today we'll go through those stills. I'll leave the link to the full documentary of this experience in the description, so please go and check that out. But here are 12 images that I caught in the radioactive exclusion zone of Chernobyl. So this is reactor number four. That is the reactor, the nuclear reactor that exploded in 1986. Now, if you were to go to Chernobyl today, you would not be able to take that photo because since 1986, they've been trying to stem the flow and only recently they've been able to build this massive structure to go over the top of reactor number four. So I was one of the last people to ever photograph reactor number four because two weeks after I was going, the, the big dome was gonna go over it. So that's a really special photo and not many people have got that photo of the reactor in that state. And that was as close as I could get to reactor number four because if you got any closer, your Geiger counter that you were carrying on the, on the trip would just go mad. So we were there for five minutes, that close. And then um, our guide told us that we had to move on. So once you've been to Chernobyl and you've seen the town of Chernobyl and the reactors, you then move on to Pripyat. And Pripyat is about a mile's drive away from the reactors. And that is probably where I took the most photos on the trip. It's an eerie, eerie place to go. So this next one is a photograph I took in um, the school. We walked down one of the corridors and we got to the cafeteria. And in the cafeteria, there was just a sea of gas masks all on the floor. And the gas masks weren't there for Chernobyl. Obviously, there was a Cold War happening at the time. Um, and they were dumped in the cafeteria before the whole school was abandoned. And there was also one hanging from the cafeteria ceiling. And that was one that someone would have done since Chernobyl happened. That, no, no teacher or no one did that at the time. And that probably stands out as one of the, the photos of the, of the entire journey for me, is that image of that gas mask hanging there. So there are a couple of other images that I took in the school. The next one being the small children's chair that was placed in one of the classrooms. And it just had scratches on it. It was obviously an old chair that had been there for years and years before the accident happened. But what I wanted to try and capture in this photo was the fact that, you know, there were kids involved in the evacuation. There were kids that lived in this city and how terrifying it must have been for them at the time. Not really understanding what was happening, just having a good time in school one day and then having to be evacuated and leave for for either Belarus or Kiev. So, and then there's the next one of a table and chairs with a book in a corridor with the windows all smashed out. And it's just there as if that was seconds before the evacuation happened. The workbook's still open as if someone was just working in it. Out of the, all the places that I visited in Chernobyl, I definitely think the school was the most eye-opening. Yeah, the supermarket was hard. It was a such a close connection to home, a place that we go to so regularly as a society here in Western Europe. We'll go to Tesco's, Asda's or wherever and to see a supermarket, just like we have at home, white shiny floors, big shelves stacked high with cans of food and whatever and trolleys and and tills, the cashier tills, and to see it completely abandoned and ruined, it was almost as if it gave you that hint of what could happen to us should some massive event happen in the UK. This photo that I took next was one I took in the sports hall, one of the main sports halls there with a basketball hoop still screwed to the wall, but all the floors were peeling and rotting and there were holes in the ceiling and it was raining um, and it just completely rotted through the entire building with the wall peeling damp everywhere. The smell was horrific. 
The fairground is obviously a clear representation of how they were trying so hard to entice people to come there. And according to our fixer, the fairground was supposed to open the weekend following the nuclear disaster. So if the disaster hadn't happened, it was gonna open pretty much a few days later. So again, it was a really brand brand spanking new fairground, ready to go. Everyone in the city was really looking forward to, to going there, but it never got used because the disaster happened, which is really, really sad. And this next image is, I think, quite a powerful photo that I took of one of the apartment blocks. Um, you'll be familiar with seeing images of really tall Eastern European apartment blocks. And that's how they housed all the people in Chernobyl. There were no houses, they were just big, big apartment blocks. And you could go into any one of these when you were in Chernobyl. And we went into this particular one, and you could see, you know, clothes still hung up, beds still unmade, um, knives and forks and plates on tables. And and I felt there was kind of too much to take photos of inside. So I wanted to represent that abandonedness by taking the photo from outside, looking up at these really big, powerful buildings that are still standing today. So moving on to the last two photos, these are stills of a USSR radar station. It was top secret at the time, and it's a massive, massive structure that is almost, I think, 120 meters wide and 50 meters tall. It is a huge, huge structure. It was purely there to detect nuclear missiles being sent from America to Eastern Europe at the time of the Cold War. And although it never actually got into operation, it was again a unbelievable representation and connection back to that era. So that was my trip to Chernobyl. I thought I'd do this especially because of the Sky One series that's out at the moment about Chernobyl. So if you're interested in learning more about the history of the place, definitely check out that Sky series. It is brilliant and it's had loads of incredible reviews. Also, feel free to check out my documentary that I made while I was there. The link is in the description. Please go and check it out. It's all in Welsh language, but it's all subtitled in English as well. So you can watch that and I'll see you next week.